So welcome back to the class on computational neuroscience. We are looking this week at associative memory in a network of neurons. And I would like to come back to the question of how do we set the weights for the physical systems like magnetic materials. I said clearly, I think that it's nature who has decided on the value of the interaction weights. But for a Hopfield model, it's basically us. I decided what to put there. I made a proposition what to put there. Now the question arises, where do the connections really come from? This specific formulation goes back to Donald Hepp in 1949, but the concept can be traced back to earlier philosophical ideas, starting probably with Aristoteles. So basically this rule says, if I have a neuron J, and if this neuron J is connected to another neuron I, then the connection between J and I can change, and it can change based on the joint activity. If the neuron J, so also called the presynaptic neuron because it sits before the synapse, repeatedly or persistently takes part in firing cell I, which is called the postsynaptic neuron because it sits after the synapse, then the efficiency of J driving I is increased, which means the weight is increased. Now this is a local rule because for this connection I only use information from those two neurons but not information from other neurons K and somehow it says that you need joint activity of the two neurons. You need simultaneously active neurons. It picks up the correlations. If neurons fire together then they wire together. That's the basic idea. So Hep had slightly different example when he explained this but what he had in mind was more or less this. Suppose you go on a travel, you go in a foreign country and you see a really exotic fruit. Now this fruit has a certain shape, it will activate some set of neurons in the sensory areas, it has a certain color, it has, if you bite in it, it has a certain taste, you can smell it, it has a certain odor. So different neurons in different areas of the brain will become active based on this stimulation by an apple. And now suppose we have this rule of HEP. So now we have active neurons, the red neurons, and these neurons, because they are active, they fire together, and that means they make stronger connections. The connections are now stronger. And this is what makes me say, this item, this concept of an apple is now memorized. And how can I test that it's memorized? Well, suppose you come back from your trip and you have taken a photograph of the apple and the photograph might even be in black and white and it might be incomplete, so you only see part of the image. But now, this part of the image that you see is sufficient to stimulate the rest of the image. Once you have the image, it's sufficient to make you recall, yeah, it tasted like this, it smelled like this. So the whole concept of an apple is recalled by partial information. And so that's the essence of this associative recall that we are trying to explain uh, in the model, such as the Hopfeld model. So despite of the partial information, you can retrieve the full information, the picture of an apple, the, the, the smell of an apple, the odor of an apple. These strongly connections, connected neurons that represent the concept of an apple in their connections, they are also called an assembly. An assembly that will represent the apple concept. Now the question is whether this is true. So of course, you don't want to make experiments with humans, but there are special cases, humans suffering from a strong form of epilepsy, and these patients do not respond to pharmacological treatment, so surgery is undertaken. Before you do the surgery, you make sure that it's not affecting important part of the brains. And therefore, you stick in a needle, an electrode, and you can record from one or several neurons. And before you do the recordings, you can talk with the patients and ask them what they are interested in. Okay, maybe they are interested in opera and they have been in Sydney in the opera house, which they really like. And they may also have been in Pisa. Uh, they have seen certain films. They, they like the movies. So we know something about the patients and it doesn't hurt to have this electrode in the brain. Humans are awake. You can actually ask them what they are, uh, how they feel. You can ask them, you can present them, a, you can discuss with them, you can present images and ask them what they think about it. And so this patient here 
had a neuron somewhere in the brain, and this neuron always responded to the Sydney Opera House. Now, this is not a sensory stimulation, because this could be different views of the Sydney Opera House taken under different illumination conditions, but also just the word Sydney Opera would re-stimulate the same neuron. And this neuron is not stimulated by the Pisa Tower. So the likelihood that you would find one single neuron that represents the Sydney Opera House, if this is the only neuron to do so, would be extremely low. So the fact that you find such a neuron at all is an indication that there is this kind of happy an assembly, an assembly of neurons that re represent together the concept of Sydney Opera House. The concept, not just the visual stimulation, but the concept that brings together the name, the form of the opera house, and maybe memories of uh, operas that the patient has seen in this opera house. Now let's look at other forms of memory. Let's look at associative recall. And uh, I would like to first tell you the shape of these objects. It's a rectangle, it's a circle, it's a triangle, it's a rectangle again, and it's an arrow. Now I would like you to tell, and you can just say it out loudly or mumble it in front of you, just tell the color of these objects and try to be as fast as possible. Okay, it's an easy task. Now let's redo this again and tell me the color of the following five items. Okay, so most likely you have seen that it's more difficult. It's more difficult because you have to work against the natural associations. And this is called the Stroop effect. The point is that associations can be very strong and these associations can go between different aspects of the same concept. There are also associations that go across different levels. For example, animals, you may associate birds or fish. If you think of birds, you may think of a specific example of a bird and uh, say it's a swan or a goose or a raven or whatever you like. Okay? Now, again, I would like you to speak out loud what you think first. Or you write down the first letter on a piece of paper, but if you're alone in a room, just speak out loud what you think of first. And here is what I want you to do. I want you to give me, as fast as possible, an example of a tool, an example of a color, an example of a fruit, an example of a music instrument. And most likely, three of the four items that came in your, into your mind are correct. Hammer, red, apple, maybe not the violin. This is sort of a not done that example. So associations can be strong. The associations can go across different hierarchies. They can go, they can link different aspects of a concepts. And it's hard to go against natural associations. And these associations are obviously not pre-programmed at birth in your brain, but these associations have been learned and happy learning is one of the possibilities. So please take a minute to answer the quiz.